first of all, uh, we'll have uh, Nancy and Steve and uh, Kyle. They're going to talk about TSB2 updates and uh, working group reports. We're going to do this as a kind of a tag team and because um, we, we have a one session to try and do it all kind of quickly. So we decided we're just going to use one PowerPoint and we're going to go through each part of it rather than switching off. So I get to go first and then I'm done. So <laughs> anyway, um, I'm Nancy Heather with, the, you all know who I am, uh, with TSP2 Bridge Preservation, um, NCPP, MSU, that whole spiel. But um, we're going to just talk just a little bit about, um, well, I guess I'll, I'll introduce the other people that are going to talk too. Um, second is going to be Tim Sherrill from North Carolina DOT, um, Stephen Austin from Texas DOT, Kyle Bartfay from Foss Crete. Did I say your name right? You did. Perfect. Yep. All right. Okay. Um, we're just going to give you a little bit of an update on what's going on with the... So anyway, we have a number of different working groups. The working groups are um, one of the ways that we, um, we accomplish things. We, we actually... Um, you know, one of our main focuses at TSP2 is to um, to actually do things that will help the uh, the DOTs bridge owners manage their preservation programs and and help them do that. And uh, so, when we find things that we think need some extra attention, that need some work done, um, ways to progress things, there's working groups that get created. And uh, one of the newer ones that is, um, has been developed really within the last year and a half or so, Southeast was the first one to do so, was the Bridge Inspection, working, uh, Bridge Inspection Program Managers Working Groups. Uh, with all the changes with the SNBI and the NBIS, uh, as we've been discussing, um, the inspection program managers kind of have an, a, a special role, and sometimes they have a lot of support in each agency, and sometimes they don't, and they're kind of all alone. And so these groups were designed as a way to get these program managers together, sort of like we do with preservation, um, but in, in support of preservation, the inspection program managers then can have these meetings and they can talk through issues and how different states do things. And so those have become, um, all, of the, all of the partnerships right now have an inspection program managers group, except for I think the Northeast who's planning to develop one and they haven't just gotten it started yet. But it, they're, they're wonderful working groups where they can actually talk about a lot of inspection specific things. The other national working groups that we currently have that are the most active are the, um, we'll turn the laser pointer on, the Bridge Preservation National Working Group, the Bridge Preservation Outreach and Communication Working Group, the Construction Quality of Bridge Preservation National Working Group, um, I'm sorry, BMS is what I meant to say. Um, the Bid Bridge Deck Preservation National Working Group, Innovative Technology Demonstrations National Working Group, and Local Agency. So we're each going to kind of tag team working through those. So first, I'm going to just show you where you can find more information about it. This is the TSP2 website, as I've shown you before. There's the QR code. There's the um, address for the website and if you go right down here um, I actually have that in there also there's a link to the national working groups as I mentioned before to some people some of this information is a little bit outdated um, we're in the process of trying to get the the scope and and the layout of the working groups on the website all updated um, but at least you'll know a little bit more about the working groups and what they're doing and who to contact. So I'm going to talk briefly about the Bridge Preservation BMS National Working Group. This is one that had been started a few years ago uh, between COVID, uh, some staff changes, and varying things. It had kind of just been idle 
for a while. We've just recently gotten it reinvigorated. Dave Gentinen, who is here, is co-chair, and he had been co-chair before um, with that, and um, Kent Miller from Nebraska agreed to a co-chair with him. The other person, the other DOT person, was from Virginia. He is no longer in his same role, so not able to do uh, uh, the same, you know, continue to work on this. We had Brett Hartman from Oregon DOT um, also agree to be secretary for that group. And they're, they're going through what had been done before and looking at it a little bit more and deciding what path they really want to take forward. We've had two meetings so far. Um, there's a lot of, again, uh, related to the NBIS changes and the SNBI changes um, and, and how that's going to affect uh, the bridge management systems. What is, you know, they're really going through and reassessing what are our main focuses right now? What do we really want to be working on? Um, we have about, I think there's been, there were 22 attendees at the first meeting. I think there were probably a couple more at the second one. Um, a lot of really good attendance. That's, a, you know, for a working group, that's, that's really good. If you're interested at all, let us know because I think they're going to, um, and, and Dave can maybe even um, speak to that a little bit more, but they are going to really try and focus a little bit more on interaction between the different states and things that they're struggling with and how they can make their BMS systems better. How can we uh, improve and sharing you know, what one state does well and another state is struggling with and some things like that to, um, uh, again, and, and with the TAMP is the other thing that, you know, everybody deals with. And this is a requirement and you have to be able to do certain things and you have to show that your BMS is supportive of your TAMP. And, and so it's going to become a bigger and bigger thing. So if it, again, like I said, if it's something that you're interested in, um, please feel free to reach out to me. And with that, I am going to uh, Construction Quality Bridge Preservation National Working Group. Tim is really active in that group, and he is going to give a little update on that. Thank you, Nancy. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, so uh, the Construction Quality uh, Work Group, I guess, was begun a couple of years ago uh, and, and I wasn't involved or hadn't didn't do much with that to begin with I think Dick has been there uh, from the beginning but uh, right now uh, we are led by Fawad Jabber from uh, Nebraska DOT and uh, the last several calls that we've uh, had had some good participation uh, Doug Beer from Texas David Dobson from Oregon uh, Joe Navarro from Maryland, uh, Chris Keegan is on the call, typically, as I said, Dick Dunn. And, um, you know, that thing, and Nancy's been on several calls as well. Uh, you know, when the, the working group was first started, uh, construction quality obviously is a gigantic thing because we do lots of stuff. And uh, I think there's been, you know, uh, particularly from some of our uh, construction management folks, uh, a little bit less attentiveness to uh, preservation work and the required quality. And so uh, some of the construction quality that comes out of our preservation projects has been up to snuff. And so uh, because it's so wide ranging, you know, we, we kind of were losing our, uh, didn't have a good focus. We didn't know exactly what to do. Kind of had some fits and starts there. But uh, recently, uh, I think we've decided that what we're gonna do is start attacking uh, you know, uh, specifications. Uh, that's a great place to start to uh, set forth what the expectations are on the projects. And going forward, as we as we de develop more, uh, I anticipate we'll probably look at uh, you know uh, inspection training and, and various things like that. But uh, our most recent calls, we've had probably at least three calls. I think. Um, uh, our, our first focus on looking at uh, uh, specifications uh, was on uh, polyester polymer concrete overlays. And so uh, we had uh, participation from uh, uh, Merritt Hansen with uh, QuickBond, a lot of you guys know Merritt, 
And uh, he has been very instrumental in helping us walk through that um, between, uh, we have a good, you know, we, we started using PPC in 2016, so we're getting some good experience with it. Uh, Dave from Oregon has a lot of experience with it. And so uh, between uh, the two states and uh, Merritt and his experience across the country and uh, a lot of the fits and starts that other, other states have had with using PPC, he's been very open and honest and saying uh, you know, good things he's seen in specifications and bad things. And uh, so between all of us, we've, we've been able to share good information. And uh, I don't know that, we might, I don't know. We, we may put out uh, maybe a guide specification for some of these things as we go forward. Uh, we, we like to produce things and, and show that we've done good work. And so I sort of anticipate something like that might be something that would result from, from our work. But it's, um, you know, it's, uh, it, it's a good experience. We, we want to try to uh, improve the construction quality. And I, I think a lot of the mindset from a lot of our construction folks has gotten better, but we can always uh, provide some more uh, improvement, of course. But um, if anyone would like to participate on our monthly calls, we have a call every, uh, the fourth Thursday of the month uh, at 11 a.m. Eastern time. And we'd love for you to uh, jump in and join us if you can. I'll give a quick um, summary of the Bridge Deck Preservation National Working Group. Um, one of the big accomplishments that, that, we, um, that we had was uh, probably about a year and a half ago, we published a Concrete Bridge Deck Preservation Resource Guide. Um, this resource guide really was intended to, to give kind of a a high level oh, a high level summary on bridge deck preservation actions that are options for uh, for states um, and it's it's in it it's again high level but it provides a lot of resources um, uh, that, that are available to, to dig into um, uh, different deck preservation actions in more detail um, right now um, we've got a uh, a penetrating a sealer and crack sealer uh, research project. Uh, the, each of the regional partnerships agreed to participate in funding um, really a, a white paper study that describes current practices across the state. We know we recognized that um, that a lot of people are revisiting the effectiveness of different sealing uh, sealers and and the need to um, to reapply sealers. Uh, to, to crack sealers, so um, this this is likely going to lead. <clears throat> the end result of this is going to be a white paper, and then likely leading to maybe an NCHRP project down the road. So, um, just uh, another another thing, another uh, project that we've been working on is uh, uh, it really has been led by a sub group of this working group, led by Pat Martins and and Dick Dunn. Um, for the development of pocket guides for different cementitious overlays. Um, that I'm, I'm really excited about, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm excited about that um, and, and what is going to be hopefully useful to, to states um, when, they're, when they've got a project already executed. So this pocket guide will serve as a checklist of sorts to, to um, inspectors out in the field maybe a pre-planning meeting, a pre-activity meeting, checklist, and then, hey, after the work is done, what, what, do, we need to, uh, uh, what do we need to make sure that we're, we're keeping track of? Um, just a quick summary of maybe some of the uh, meetings that we've had, and, and a lot of our meetings have had a technical uh, presentation, and then we've had a roundtable discussion with uh, participating states. Um, so. In March, we had a bridge deck overlay pre uh, epoxy injection process, a presentation by Iowa DOT, and then we had a, a small presentation on Tennessee's DOT, Tennessee DOT's latex modified concrete overlay project, and we had a, a discussion in that meeting on bridge deck preservation peer exchange template questionnaire. So the idea here with this questionnaire, with this template, was to to um, promote dialogue. And we've since used this, um, this bridge deck preservation uh, peer exchange questionnaire to, to 
uh, serve as topics for roundtable discussions where where states um, that are participating can can share. Um, in April, we had Tyler Lay talk about rapid setting repair materials. Uh, we had a roundtable discussion on concrete repair mix selection criteria. May, we had a presentation on leak slabs, and we had uh, a, an introduction of that rigid cementitious overlay document. So the, the working group started uh, brainstorming, well, what, what all do we want in there? What, what does it look like? Um, what are the benefits of that? Uh, what are the intended benefits of that, that uh, pocket guide um, that I mentioned um, previously? Uh, in July, we had a presentation by Dr. Glenn Washer on infrared imaging of bridge decks. We had a roundtable discussion in that meeting about uh, methods used by agencies to mitigate and or reduce early age cracking. In August, we had a presentation uh, on the AASHTO guides for bridge preservation and deck preservation actions and, and, uh, and discussions on next steps and, and AASHTO's plan to, or, or in the plan to implement workshops to, to raise awareness and educate uh, states. We had a, a round table discussion on why deck preservation actions are typically used by your agency and who performs the work. Uh, the meetings are the third Thursday of the month at noon uh, central time. Um, upcoming meeting is September 15th. You're welcome to join. Um, and we, we would really be excited for, um, for increased participation from other states uh, in particular, but uh, we, know, we know there's a lot, of, uh, a lot that we can gain from expertise uh, from uh, consultant engineers and, and um, industry as well. So thank you. Hey guys, my name's Kyle. Um, I'm not the chair of, uh, I'm going to be talking about ITD and uh, local agency working group. I'm not the chair of these, but um, I am pretty active in both of them, and I was kind of voluntold to, uh, do, uh, to go over these since uh, the other chairs aren't here. Uh, so first I'm going to talk about um, ITD, Innovative Technology Demonstration. Uh, but before we get into the group updates, I kind of want to give a brief reason for why this group was created. Back in 2014, uh, Foscrete was a pilot project. We did a cold weather repair. Uh, with Massachusetts DOT, and uh, we've been trying to track the performance since then. We've had some others, um, other demonstrations that kind of address a unique aspect of uh, preservation and repairs. Um, so, again, this is a this graph is is shown to compare the construction industry to other major industries as far as innovation and, and productivity. Um, when you look at industries like agriculture, they've had about 120 percent increase in productivity due to innovation. If you look at manufacturing, they had about 80% uh, increase, and even uh, industry like mining had about a 40% increase. Unfortunately, you see construction all the way down at the bottom, and uh, since about 1990, they've only had about a 15% increase in productivity due to innovation. So this brings up the question, why? Um, the main reason for this study they found is uh, due to lower margins. Um, do, um, other industries with higher margins had more incentive to invest more in innovation to get more production out of, out of the work and the man hours that they're putting into it. So this really affects all aspects of the industry, uh, which kind of creates uh, self-imposed barriers for trying out new things. Uh, from an agency's perspective, it's hard to change specifications and try everything that us industry people say is the best things in sliced bread. If uh, it doesn't work for whatever reason, oftentimes it's considered uh, that the resources are wasted. On the other side of things, from an industry, industry perspective, it costs a lot of time, money, and resources to perform R&D. And on top of that, once you perform all that R&D and come up with a new product, you have to figure out um, how to get approvals, testing, and um, spend more money and time to, to do that. So uh, this is exactly why the ITD Working Group was created, which is essentially to provide a platform for these innovative ideas and products to get independently tested, vetted, and tracked so it can be efficiently verified across a wide range of states, applications, and environments seen around the country which leads to a faster path to the best solutions. Um, I'm going to read this quickly. I know you guys can all read, but uh, because of this is basically a problem statement for the ITD. Uh, because of all the complexities and risks involved with bringing new products and services into acceptance and used by the states, ITD offers a faster path to demonstrate, observe, document, and share both successes and failures of innovative technologies. ITD helps industry speed the best solutions to market and save agencies the cost of wasted time and resources on unsuccessful technologies. So right now, we currently have eight different industry partners that participate in the ITD. Uh, typically, it's a manufacturer or producer of a product, and we currently have 12 um, innovative uh, 
products or um, demonstrations underway. Uh, we have about one or two more coming up. But again, we're always looking for more, especially from the agency side, because uh, without agency participation and without a wide range of different applications or demonstrations, it's you know, a little better than a case study. So the goal here is to get as many different types of demonstrations in different areas so that you can see how products works or don't work. And the goal of the ITD program is to promote, to put, to promote excuse me, not only the good stuff, but the good, the bad, and the ugly, so we can see what really works when it's coming to the market. Um, so again, we're always looking for uh, agency participation. If you guys are interested, please find me or one of the uh, industry partners uh, that are here today. Um, I apologize, I don't have the list of the, of the uh, industry partners that are involved with it, but I'll say them really quickly. We have uh, Advanced Chemical Chemical Technologies, which is an epoxy silane multi-coat system. We have a Chemco's Integral Gel Waterproofing System. We have Foscrete's Mag Fos uh, Cement Series of Concrete. ISA's Pore Shields SME PS Concrete Durability Enhancer. And then lastly, True Tech Bridge, which has a transparent stay in place forms. Again, we all have booths here, so feel free to come find us and talk with us about you know, the product and if you're interested in uh, setting up a demonstration. Um, again, we're looking for more agency participation and we're willing to work with you guys there. Um, next is local, uh, local agency outreach. Uh, as we've discussed and we've heard in, in a lot of these uh, conferences, local agencies have about 50% of the bridges in the catalog. So it's critical for um, agencies to help promote these best practices, innovative technologies to the local agency group. The main point of the local agency group is to deliver trainings. You see all these dots here with the different states. Uh, the first round of the uh, outreach is like a webinar. We go over all the best bridge pr preservation tactics, expansion joint, you know, painting, sealing, you know, everything that we talk about here, but we want to trickle that down to the local agencies. Um, after that, we uh, try to set up specialized training for a, a, a local agency that is interested in learning more about a specific preservation tactic. And uh, this is where industry also gets involved because we can do regional training and then we can also do what we're calling the, uh, the rodeo demos where an industry person uh, will take their product out there, put it in the field, show them how it's used, and then um, in, in, so the agency knows the best practices from you know, moving forward here. And since we're probably already up against it, um, you know, that, that's all I have for, for that. But again, if, if you're an agency person, you want to get some locals involved, you know, we're willing to set up a, a presentation that will lead to uh, specific learning and then also finally getting into the field. And uh, if you have any questions, please uh, come find us uh, out in the booth area. The preceding was produced by the National Center for Pavement Preservation. More information can be found on the web at pavementpreservation.org. Additional support provided by Michigan State University.